Davis, David Samak or Chermak, it depends on what country you're coming from. Uh, I want to show you uh, what we did, what was our journey with OpenStack the last three, four years. And uh, you may be wondering why pros it down by uh, me. Let me show you who we are first. Um, Rosetta is on the market since 91, so we are celebrating 25 years of our history. Uh, we have a new turnover in a group of 10 women in Europe, so we have a very big company. And we actually have two divisions. One division is uh, infrastructure services division, so we operate roughly 18 data centers in Central Europe. Uh, not our data centers, these data centers, and we run different services uh, in those data centers on top of our network. Uh, we develop different solutions uh, in house as well. And the second part of Prozita is value-added distributor, value-added reseller of uh, different brands. We are a pretty large Cisco partner. Uh, we do various networks, uh, switches in 29 countries in Central and Eastern Europe. So uh, we have two divisions. However, there is a huge synergy between those two divisions. You know, we sell hardware, but we use it as well, so we can help our customers. We show them how to do that. Uh, we have hands-on experience with like latest equipment, so we can use that in our infrastructure division as well. Uh, cloud services was the logical next step because we were selling hardware to our customers and they were housing or collecting the hardware in our data centers. Uh, so we decided to build some virtualized solutions. We uh, tried different ones. Uh, we decided to use some open solution, not uh, to another VMware shop uh, and we selected OpenStack roughly three four years ago as our full solution. Uh, we started to develop some things around it like our small ecosystem and uh, first production customers we launched two years ago on uh, ISO series. So what is the actual infrastructure we're using for OpenStack? We have 18 data centers uh, a good example of our cloud infrastructure is Prague. Within Prague, we have three data centers. Uh, in those three data centers, we built one OpenStack cluster. It's actually more OpenStack clusters, so we sell private clouds, hosted private clouds. But they are always located in three data centers. There is a high availability uh, between those data centers, so we can actually withstand the downtime of one data center uh, without losing any data. What we need to do is just to start VMs in, in the other data center. So, so this is the cloud infrastructure in Prague. We opened new pops in during this year. Of, let's say autumn, we're starting US, Hong Kong, and Dubai. So, what's the current OpenStack status? Um, I'm not talking about Metaka or any other version. Uh, OpenStack is clearly industry standard. So, there is no other open source or open cloud a uh, social market with you know so much drive from and there's you know it's like so it is just a standard. It's a really good framework. It's not product. I mean you really need to build a huge ecosystem around that. But the framework is good. Uh, what's bad? It's still you know far away from the employee use. Uh, there are so many new projects on so it's growing you know horizontally. However, there's still a lot of work which needs to be done on you know, the most important projects like Nova. So, uh, it's a great chance for us to uh, be the company who will actually make it running for, for customers. Uh, what customers want? Uh, they're already using VMware you know, in-house virtualization, they're using Amazon, Target Space, Azure, public clouds. Uh, but they want uh, private clouds because of you know, data locality, but the support, they really need somebody who will work with them to, to make their infrastructure better, more agile. Uh, they want transparent pricing. Uh, you get pretty transparent pricing with Amazon, but the pricing if you grow will go like sky high. So, so you need, uh, so private clouds can actually save you a lot of money when you have large infrastructures. Uh, we focus on larger customers, we don't sell one to three, five, ten VMs, we focus on customers with 500, 1,000 VMs and more. So. Uh, where we actually see uh, the next step, that's a platform as a service. Customers at the moment, they don't want that. Uh, but we are pushing our current IS customers to start to use PaaS. Because with PaaS, you get much better TCO. Uh, you can save a lot of money on operations. You can be, you can, you 
much more agile, flexible applications uh, without uh, you know additional costs. And of course, what the customers want the most, they want help with the cloud transition. So, uh, move, giving them just the infrastructure is not enough. We actually told uh, we, we told at the beginning that we will give the infrastructure to our customers. We will spend some time with them, and you know they will start to use it. After these two years, we know it's not like that. I mean, we spend much more time with customers than we thought. So, what the customers can use for uh, private clouds? They can use DIY, do-it-yourself approach. They can use public clouds to give them a private cloud solution, which are pretty flexible uh, at this moment. Uh, a lot of suppliers are using heavy machinery, so I mean, really huge. Uh, complex systems to you know solve pretty easy tasks, and and there are a lot of service providers in the market. You know VMware shops, which are moving to OpenStack, and they see that they can save money, their customers can save money, but they have no background. I mean, they can't just click next, next, next. How they did that in, with VMware, I mean, it doesn't work with OpenStack. So, and there are other non-standard based service providers. I mean, like, there are many of them, they are providing those services for years and years, so they are not based on OpenStack. They don't have APIs and you know, they are not scalable. Okay, so what are the gaps? What we what where are the gaps we identified and how we want the, how we are leveraging them? It's actually we want to bring something to customers with large infrastructure infrastructures, which means you know they are paying a lot of money for that, and we want to show them how they can save money, not just you know on a subscription rate they're paying every every month, but how they can save money on long term, long run. Uh, uh, what we need to do for customers is actually bring prepare a product which is you know ready, deploy it for them, and provide the services on top of. What are the needed skills to run a production-grade OpenStack or any cloud service? You need to know all this. Uh, every single part of this is uh, something you need engineers for that. Uh, if you don't have it, you will fail, or you will fail at certain moment. Uh, we learned in the last three years that you can't contract uh, third parties to handle these things for, for a reason, because at the end, we are selling infrastructure services to our customers. There are tight SLAs, and uh, we all experienced some issues with our partners, and we paid SLAs. The partners they didn't pay anything, or they paid like this small part, and you know we got issues with our customers. You know our uh, uh, our cooperation was you know ruined or not ruined, but you know hurt it somewhat. So. So what we found out is that the only way how we can, we can really do this is to have to know to have end-to-end -end know-how in the company, in-house, to really have engineers to be able to handle all these things in-house. It doesn't mean that we need to do this when it comes to development or long-term things. Yeah, with long-term development, it's great to have partners and work with them. Uh, I would like to cover a couple topics. Uh, these are probably the most important topics when it comes to uh, OpenStack. Uh, I'm going to cover those four topics on top uh, because we have only 30 minutes or 25 minutes, so I need to go fast. Uh, customers are looking for trust. So uh, what they need is trustworthy product. Okay, let's say OpenStack is trustworthy. They're looking for a trustworthy uh, service provider and they are looking for trusted infrastructure. They, of course, they want they need trust in their application. So I mean, like it's a like a chain of trust. Uh, customers want trust. We want trust as well. We want we need trust in our infrastructure. And this is uh, something I'm going to cover uh, today. So what we did to provision to deploy our infrastructure, uh, we decided to do full automated environment, to build fully automated environment. So uh, we actually have continuous integration, continuous delivery system for uh, the provisioning as well, for the de development of the deployment process. Uh, 
we are not fixing anything by hand. So if anything breaks, it doesn't matter if it's hardware or it's like a software issue, we just trash the, the hypervisor, we trash everything and we really bought it from scratch. Uh, which gives us uh, uh, more stability. There are no you know, hand-fixed things. We know that every single node is uh, running this application, this state. What for every single cloud we deploy, we have single cloud definition uh, tree structures, you know, in here. Uh, and using this definition, you can build the cloud, deploy, provision, operate it, expand it, downgrade it, upgrade anything you need to do. You, need to, you have this single source of uh, trust in, in that in the definition file. So that's the point. OpenStack release, so I'll start with this small box. Uh, OpenStack releases there is a new version every six months. Every version goes end of life after 12 months, usually sometimes sooner than 12 months, 11 months. So you need to do upgrade to every new version. If you don't do that and you want to skip one version, uh, you will actually start to use end of life versions of OpenStack. And, and there could be issues with the upgrade paths, so it's really good to upgrade to every new version. Uh, what we did, we built wall solution in Docker containers. So every single part which can be run in Docker container is running in Docker containers. That brings us uh, really good abilities to you know upgrade, downgrade anything, to do snapshots of configuration, snapshots of databases. Um, we can do security between services, so we can you know set firewalls between containers. Uh, we can scale containers, we run one, two, three, five of them. None, none of those containers have, has a configuration inside. So we, these con containers are actually using this single point of source of information, which was in the last slide. And so we can trash them like this, start new containers, we can do anything, we can upgrade all back to old infrastructures. And uh, it actually you know, brings, brings us much better security than running everything on web or in the apps. This is something which is pretty unique. Uh, there is no other uh, company on the market, when it definitely when it comes to OpenStack, who can offer this. We spent quite a time working on trusted computing. So, um, because we want to trust in our infrastructure, we want our customers to sure that we trust in our infrastructure. So, uh, so we are using trusted computing, TCG, standards, sets and standards, TBM, Intel TXT, to be able to trust in the infrastructure. When the hardware comes, the service comes from the vendor, we can safely, you know, discover them, we can safely, you know, provision them, and we can operate them as well. Uh, at every point of time, we know that this is the hardware we ordered at the beginning. The configuration is correct. BIOS is okay. Uh, operating system is the kernel which is running there. Is what we want there. Nobody uh, tampered with any of these parts, and uh, and we can decommission the hardware at the end because using this technology, we use uh, we encrypt hard drives as well. It, the, this is actually really interesting because even our administrators, sysadmins, they can't access the keys which are using for uh, the hard drives. So, you know, if we decommission hard drives, we can just you know, take them off the service and you know, trash them. We don't need to take care about anything. And we don't, and for our customer needs, uh, they're not going to pay fines because of not wiping the hard drives. And uh, trusted computing is um, actually pretty difficult to understand. I mean, like the technology is almost ready. It's like uh, uh, there's so many different things you can do with this. Uh, but it, no, nobody's using it. Nobody's really using it. And we really started from the hardware delivery to the decommission, and it's there. And we know that we can trust in the infrastructure. Uh, trusted logging, another thing which is completely missing in OpenStack. Unfortunately, logging is missing in OpenStack a little bit. Uh, there is still a lot of things which needs to be done in OpenStack to really provide uh, 
debugging the data to uh, service providers or to OpenStack uh, users. Uh, what we did with logging, we a little bit extended OpenStack logging, and uh, we did uh, see the log ceiling. So every, every single log, we know that this log has been, you know, made at this time with this hypervisor, and we sign it with you know, some RSA key, and nobody can tamper with logs. So, so when it comes to compliance, you know that all your logs you have in your database are actually the original logs, nobody tampered with logs. There are a lot of other things you can do with when it comes to security in OpenStack. We hardly need OpenStack operating system, you know, limited privilege escalations, you know, GR security, to be added two-factor authentication, which is uh, something which probably the next OpenStack release you will have it there, but you know, I mean, everybody has two-factor authentication, it's not de facto standard. Uh, on this data encryption, over the wire data encryption, so you need to encrypt data between data centers at last, if not between service and ranks, you need to do this between data centers. Uh, intrusion protection and detection systems, which can actually protect you against zero-day attacks. So, because, I mean, you have pretty huge APIs in OpenStack, and when you have more services, you have a you know, bigger API base. So, you need to protect yourself against security attacks. And, and for us, accessing the infrastructure of a customer means we need to add uh, some security on our side. So, we're using hardware tokens, dual VPN, different things, but, you know, that's beyond uh, the scope of the presentation. Uh, Monitoring. We actually came, what I didn't tell you at the beginning is that we spent three years working on this. Uh, we are finally coming out of the stealth mode. We were really working on the stack, our stack. And we are now trying to start to sell it to customers and to show it to the public. Uh, we actually came to a point that we are going to open source some of our products uh, because we think that customers, I mean, like it's a, it's a right for customer to have some of these things. So, uh, so we're going to open source some things. When it comes to monitoring and performance, you need customers want to see uh, what is how the cluster is performing, not just like what their VMs are working, but how the storage is performs, what the latencies. Uh, what's the switching time between VMs, I mean, like how the hypervisors are uh, doing. So, so this is what we built in thousands and thousands of metrics on any subsystem there. Uh, what you see here is a monitoring for Ceph storage, software-defined storage. This is one part we are going to open source. Uh, with this, you see all information about Ceph. How the VMs are working, subsystems, hypervisors, OSDs, what's, what's happening there. I mean, every single thing. And this is again uh, something which you can't get this anywhere, it's, it's non existent. Storage. Uh, for infrastructure as a service, you need block storage volumes. You don't need anything else. I mean, like, you can build any other kind of storage on top of that. So, but this is the basic thing you need. Uh, you need software-defined solution. You would not want to buy EMC, NetApp, whatever. Uh, because with software-defined solution, you buy servers, you buy network, which connects those servers and drives, and you can install this kind of software as a software-defined storage. After one, two years, you, there is a new software solution, which is much more flexible, faster, it's much better. And you can just reinstall, and you have it. And so, and, and this is actually, you know, under heavy development. I mean, there are really new products in the market. So, it's very to use software defined storage. Uh, we tried many of them. Uh, LVM local storage, okay, not scalable. It's, you know, you, you can really can't really can't grow the storage somehow. iSCSI finding redundant software defined iSCSI is impossible task. Uh, cluster and many of them too complex, we all talk over different things. So everybody is using SAF. Uh, SAF is the factor standard when it comes to OpenStack. It's super slow, CPU hungry, 
uh, there is a really good benefit of SAP that you always have your data. If you configure it properly, you always have your data. Uh, of course, you can't exist, access them fast. And when it comes to issues, it's really difficult to you know, repair SAP. And we've been using SAP for two years. So, so we know exactly what it, this is about. Plus, with SAP, it's really hard to get 24 by 7 fast support. I mean, like, you can get support, of course, but you know, you need, when the storage goes down, you need like, response time like this. Okay, I said two new software defined variables. Okay, another contribution uh, to open source community from our company. The RVD, you probably know the RVD. Everybody who ever built a highly available open source solution definitely came across uh, the RVD. The RVD is a standard for that. It's 15 years in production and uh, we are working with Limbit, uh, Austrian company, the, the, own, the, the creators of the RVD to bring it as a new, super fast, scalable, reliable storage uh, to OpenStack. And everybody who knows SAF will try this. And we actually did some compassion when it comes to performance. 40 times faster than SAF, using the same CPU resources, CPU, same SSDs and hypervisors. 40 times faster, it's not 5 times faster. It's really a huge improvement. And, and when it comes to storage, okay, you have your data, but you need to back up your data. And when you are a service provider, of course, you want to make sure that all your customer data are somewhere safe. Uh, with DRBD, it's much easier than with SAP. We can do agentless backup. We are already doing this with SAP as well, but you know, it was like, huge amount of code, but with DRB we can do this much faster. We can actually back up every single volume, you know, agentless in the background with no performance impact. Uh, we can save those volumes, uh, you know, same storage, different storage, save it offline, or, you know, off-site, on-site. And we can actually bring uh, APIs to our customers so they can uh, recover those uh, saved backups volumes to new volumes so they can access it from using their you know, common OpenStack APIs. So for service provider, it's a must. I mean, you really need it. Okay, so these were main topics when it comes to OpenStack and IS. Uh, we can, at this moment, we're still selling IS to our customers. I mean, we, that's, that's the largest customer base. Uh, we spent last year working on a platform as a service. We never sold uh, this product to any new customer. We always take our IS customers. Uh, we convince them, okay guys, I want to save you know, some of your time. It's better to use platform as a service. And we actually, over the last year, it's 15 months now, we worked with our customers to build a new platform as a service solution where the customers can actually de develop, deliver, test, and operate their applications using uh, Git as a code repository and configuration repository and a single dashboard like this. Uh, so, for the customer, and it's built on top of Apache, Mesos, VCOS, uh, some I mean, like very new technologies, some of them. And what you can do with this, you can really save a lot of money. With IS, you need to still take care of your VMs. Uh, you need to make, take, take care of the scaling of different things. With PASS, you don't need to do that. Uh, you, you go to the dashboard, you create a new application, and, and for inside that dashboard, you attach different modules to the application, which means like database, Apache, Redis, uh, Redis, whatever. And, and you connect this project to the Git repository and from that moment you control everything using Git. So, so you can configure those uh, modules in Git, you can put uh, specific configuration, scaling requirements, things like that. You version those things, so you can go to a new version, you can roll back to the old, to the old version. You can, you can use this dashboard to build your ARN environment, so if you are if you have five developers, every single developer can use his own 
uh, environment, deploy new versions in, those, in that environment. And when he's finished with development, he can click send it to his manager, and his manager, the project manager, can actually approve the version and push it to the production, which is just one click. Uh, and in production environment, it, the auto scaling is there, all, all these things. So, so this is this is something pretty unique again. Why? Because there are some products in the market, there are some service providers in the market offering these things, but, but it's really hard to find a company which can do it end to end. So, so from the service software development, so I mean a company can build new modules for you, up to the, the layer when it comes to data centers and really running the production environment. So, and this is something which is still pretty new. Uh, customers, you know, they are okay with this, but you know, it's it's getting. We are getting there. I mean, the market is getting there. Uh, but let's say you know, IS is still there, but in two, three, four years, the market will be definitely moving towards this direction. And um, and for us, we need to be there because if we will, you know, stay with IS, I mean, in three years, IS can be gone. It won't be gone, but uh, you know, uh, there will be so many new competitors and and not much development when it comes to uh, new functionalities. So that's, uh, that's platform as a service. Uh, I just put a screenshot here. You can show demos to, to customers on so like come back. We, we have a booth there. The bags will come to us if you want to see uh, something. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I want to say one more thing. We built all this around OpenStack. So we are not modifying OpenStack code using uh, vanilla uh, versions, so same versions, or you know, we are actually using Canonical to uh, talk the archive. And we're building everything around that, which is great because when we were upgrading from uh, to Mitaka, from Liberty to Mitaka, it took us three days. We just you know upgraded the OpenStack and we changed a couple of things around that. But uh, we we don't use these proprietary versions. Uh, we're not modifying the code inside, and which means OpenStack is pretty good framework. As I told you at the beginning, it is framework. If you build around this, you can live with the framework. You can upgrade the framework, and it will help you to build your own services. Okay, my time's up. Um, you have any questions? We still have one minute, maybe. Okay, so thank you very much for listening.